Hey YouTube, it's ICU and welcome to the 83rd episode of Best Tech and Phone Rumors. To start off today's long episode, I just wanted to kind of break things up. And the first category I'll be discussing is the next generation iPhone. So there have been a lot of reports and rumors lately regarding the next generation iPhone. Now, first up, I kind of wanted to go back to what I said in last week's episode about a Foxconn recruiter claiming that the manufacturing company is hiring 18,000 new employees to actually produce the next generation iPhone. And it's on schedule to be released in June instead of a fall release like the current iPhone 4S. Now, back when I reported on this, I did say that there was some skepticism regarding a June release date because that would mean that the iPhone 4S would only have about eight months to be in the spotlight as the new iPhone. And now this week, we have another Foxconn employee backing that up and contradicting what the previous Foxconn employee said. Now, what's interesting is that this employee is actually the head of the human resources department at one of Foxconn's manufacturing facilities. And this individual said that the company has just received the order to start manufacturing the next generation iPhone and that they're on track to meet Apple's release date, which should be somewhere around October of this year, instead of June like the previous Foxconn employee had suggested. Now next up, we have reports of an iPhone 4S and iPhone 4 form factor iPhone with next generation parts. So basically with an upgraded CPU, and the report claims that it's a variant of Apple's current A5X chip that they use inside of the new iPad as well as one gigabyte of RAM. Now again, the report claims that these iPhones have been internally seeded, so inside of Apple, presumably at the Apple campus. And while they have next generation parts, supposedly they are disguised in that iPhone 4 and 4S form factor to basically throw off anyone who actually sees the prototype. So while these iPhones are actually disguised as the current iPhone, it's said that the design will change prior to an actual release. Also in the same report, 9to5Mac mentioned that they actually found reference references to a next generation 5,1 iPod touch. So that 5,1 is basically just the nomenclature that they use to codename the devices with, and it's also present in the different firmwares. And with five as the first number, it does suggest that this will have major upgrades over the predecessor, over the current iPod touch. And this is definitely something that a lot of people have been waiting for because the last refresh of the iPod touch was basically nothing at all, and it hasn't really had a good upgrade in some time. So hopefully this will bring major changes to the iPod Touch lineup. Again, the only thing we know about it as of now is just the code name, 5,1. So other than that, everything else is practically up in the air, but I will keep you guys updated on the situation and I'll have all of your next generation iPod Touch news and rumors. Now, next up in the next generation iPhone news, I just wanted to briefly touch on this story if you guys wanna read more about it and I'll have a link to it down below in the more info. So an analyst who recently visited Asia cites chatter from suppliers as his main source and they led him to the conclusion that the upcoming iPhone will have a screen around the size of four inches. It will have 4G LTE capabilities and it will also have a completely redesigned sleek and slimmer form factor. So while this is really nothing new, the analyst does go on to say that he thinks his information is accurate. And kind of along the same lines, news broke that Apple is also internally seeded the next version of iTunes, iTunes 11. And aside from offering improved iCloud integration, it's said to have support for Apple's next major mobile operating system release. So iOS and other than that, there aren't really too many details on the next release of iTunes, just that it has under the hood changes. Now, next up, we have Mac news and rumors. And first of all, I wanted to talk about the upcoming 2012 iMac and MacBook Pro refresh. So Taiwan's Economic Daily News suggests that the iMac will be refreshed sometime in June of this year. Now, previous reports had suggested that the 2012 iMac will be released sometime after the Intel Sandy Bridge processors debut near the end of this month. And on top of that, they also suggest that the MacBook Pro will be refreshed near the end of the quarter, so presumably sometime at near June. And the release date for the MacBook Pro series would then line up with their proposed release date for the iMac. Now, for those of you that remember Flashback, really the only big security threat to OS X recently, Apple has been working on solutions to purge older Macs of the Flashback malware and actually prevent them from getting the Flashback malware in the first place. And one of Apple's first major efforts to 
do this was actually yesterday where they released a new Java update that basically disables the automatic execution of Java applets. However, users can go back in and re-enable the automatic execution of applets. But if the system detects that there isn't actually any activity related to the Java applets, then it will go ahead and disable the automatic execution again. And other than that, the update also purges multiple variants of the flashback malware from Macs that are infected. So disabling the automatic execution of Java applets is basically just an extra precautionary measure to ensure that the malware cannot function properly. But really only users with an older Mac that has an outdated version of Java have to worry about the flashback malware. But hopefully Apple's efforts will be able to purge all infected Macs. Now they still have a ways to go to do this, but they're definitely on the right track as of now. And they're actually working with different internet service providers around the world to block access to the server that actually sends the commands to the malware. Also along the same lines for the Macs in the upcoming Ivory Bridge processor series, at Intel's developer forum, an executive revealed that the upcoming processor series will be able to support computers that have displays with Retina graphics. Now he specifically said Retina, which is actually really interesting because that's a marketing term coined by Apple back in 2010 to describe the iPhone 4's incredibly high resolution display. Also the other night, Apple's online store was actually down for a while. And when customers actually went to the Apple store website, they were greeted with a we'll be back note. However, this one's updated over the one that they've used in the past. So it led multiple people to believe that the online store is getting a complete aesthetic overhaul. However, that was not the case. Basically, it just received a chat function where customers will now be able to chat with a sales representative that should be able to answer any questions that they have regarding different Apple products. And it said that they were also testing online virtual product tours via screen sharing. So the Apple employee should in theory be able to share their screen with the customer so that they can give them a guided tour. Now, probably the most interesting story has to do with the new Apple TV and its processor. So Apple has stated numerous times and on their website that the processor used in the new third generation Apple TV is actually a single core A5 variant. And this may not actually be the case. It's apparently a dual core processor with one of the cores disabled. And actually thanks to a new technology that Apple has started to use, it's about 41% smaller than the A5 chip that's used in the iPhone 4S. Now this is curious because it wouldn't make sense for Apple to invest in the research if this type of technology was just to be used in the Apple TV. So we could kind of start to see this go over to iOS devices. And if that's the case, then we can expect iOS devices to be more powerful and slimmer than ever before. Now moving on to something that's really interesting and kind of inspiring, a new Kickstarter project was actually started the other day. Yesterday I reported on it. And at that time it had been on Kickstarter for about a day and it had already received received over $1.1 million in pledges. And today, about two days after the project was initiated on Kickstarter, it's received a little over $2 million worth of funding. So the project is called Pebble, and essentially it's a smartwatch that you wear that can connect to your iOS and Android-based devices. Now it can be used for a wide variety of different things, from something as simple as just displaying the time to actually displaying your text messages. And what's also really fascinating is that they plan on opening the SDK up to developers so that they can actually develop their own applications for this watch and it's set to actually have a complete app store of its own. So if you guys want more details on that, like what it will be able to do, and you wanna actually watch the video, then just make sure to check out the post. Next up, briefly, I just wanted to say that Tim Cook will be the opening keynote speaker for this year's D10 conference, and there will be other major players in the technology industry there as well. But again, Tim Cook will be opening for the D10 conference, which is scheduled to take place near the end of next month, and it will definitely be interesting to see how well Tim Cook holds up. Now, finally, I just wanted to save this for last. Facebook has acquired Instagram for $1 billion. Yes, the application that started out on iOS that has now moved over to the Android platform was purchased by Facebook for $1 billion and they'll actually keep the entire Instagram team on for now. And at least for the foreseeable future, it appears that it will still remain as a standalone application. So that's all of the news for today. For the question of the day, since we talked about future devices a lot and also the exciting future of iOS devices with the new type of technology that's used in the current Apple TV, let me know what you guys think about the future of Apple and their products, and let me know what you guys think different possibilities could be for the future of their products. Also, don't forget, if you like this video, please remember to rate it up and hit that subscribe button to be notified every time I release a new video. If you want to be updated more often, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and add me to one of your circles inside of Google+. And until next time, this is ICU, signing out.